Hello. I'm very pleased to be able to speak with you all this, this afternoon. And my name is Jeremy Strong. I've written a lot of books for children and really enjoyed that. And now I would like to read you the beginning of one of my favorite stories, which is The Hundred Mile an Hour Dog. I expect some of you have got a hundred mile an hour dog at home, but this is the story of one that I met. Streaker is a mixed up kind of dog. You can see from her thin body and powerful legs that she's got a lot of greyhound blood in her, along with quite a bit of Ferrari and a large chunk of whirlwind. Nobody in our family likes walking her, and this is hardly surprising. Streaking can do naught to a hundred miles an hour in the blink of an eye, and she's usually vanished over the far horizon long before you have time to yell, Streaker! Dad refuses to walk her point blank. I've got backache, is his usual excuse. Though this, how this stops him from walking, I really haven't got a clue. I tried something similar once myself. I've got a front ache, I said. Mum gave me a chilly glare and handed me the dog lead. She'll do anything to get out of walking streaker too, and that is how the whole thing started. I ended up having the craziest Easter holiday you can imagine. Trevor, said Mum one morning at the beginning of the holiday, and she gave me one of her really big, innocent smiles. Trevor? I should have guessed she was up to something. Trevor, I will give you £30 if you walk Streaker every day this holiday. £30? As you can imagine, my eyes boggled a bit. I just about had to shove them back in their sockets. I was so astonished, I never twigged that what my mum was actually suggesting was a major bribery. It's the Easter holiday, she continued, climbing onto her exercise bike and pulling a pink sweatband around her forehead. You've nothing better to do. Thirty pounds, I repeated. Walk her every day for two weeks. Mum nodded and began to pedal. I sat down to have a think. Thirty pounds was a lot of money. I could do loads of things with that. On the other hand, and this was the big crunch, I would have to walk Streaker. Now, if someone came up to you in the street and said, Hey, what's the worst torture you can think of? You might suggest boiling in oil, or having to watch golf on TV with your dad, or even the nine times table, which is my own personal nightmare. But without doubt, I would have to say, walking Streaker. This was going to be a big decision for me. I reckoned there had to be some way of controlling Streaker. After all, she was only a dog. Humans are cleverer than animals. Humans have bigger brains. Humans rule the animal kingdom. Well, I spent ages trying to work out the best way of dealing with the dog. And I asked myself, what does Streaker do best? There were several answers to this. One, make a pig of herself. Two, dig huge holes in the lawn. Three, smell. But I reckon that the one thing she really shone at was speed. Streaker was a rocket on four legs. Maybe I could use her fantastic speed to my own ends. And that was when I remembered my rollerblades. I hadn't used them for months. I hadn't seen them for months. All I had to do was to hang on to Streaker's lead and I would get a free ride. You've got to admit it was a pretty jammy idea. Mum and Dad didn't think much of it though. Mum sat at the lunch table in silence eating her 99% fat-free yoghurt that tasted like washing up water. She obviously wasn't impressed. She didn't think much of the yoghurt either. I know your clever ideas, Trevor, said Dad. They never work. Yes, they do, I protested. Look what happened when you tried to build an assault course in your bedroom. 
parents have this amazing way of bringing your most spectacular failures into general conversation, don't they? I could feel myself turning bright red. That wasn't my fault. I didn't know that fixing a squiddly bit of rope to the ceiling would bring all the plaster down. Dad grunted and pushed the remains, and Mum pushed the remains of her yoghurt across the table. Would you like to finish it for me? she asked. Why do you keep trying to poison me? I wanted to know. Mum gave me a wan smile and chewed the end of a celery stick. I was determined to prove them wrong. I launched a major expeditionary search into the bowels of my wardrobe and eventually managed to find both rollerblades. I spun the wheels and they gave off a very satisfying whoosh. How could this plan fail? I kept Streaker tied to the gatepost while I put on my skates. Then I carefully unwound the lead from the gate, wrapped it round one wrist and crouched down low behind her. OK, Streaker, lift off! She hardly needed any encouragement. Her front paws churned away just like they do in cartoons and we were off with Streaker's ears streaming out behind her like jet trails. I was amazed by her strength and speed. Even pulling me didn't prevent her from quickly reaching something that felt like Mach 1. Her legs pounded the pavement and, I, and she barked happily as we flew along. She loved it and I simply held onto the lead and felt the wind racing through my hair. We skidded round the corner in great style and Streaker headed up the main road toward the street market. I reckoned it was time to slow down a bit, but of course <laughs> I didn't have any brakes. And neither did the dog. Anyhow, by this time Streaker had switched to turbo boost and there was no stopping her. We hit the market at maximum speed, scattering shoppers in every direction. I held on for dear life as we zigzagged through the startled crowd, careering wildly from one side to the other. It was all I could do to stay upright. Streaker suddenly swerved violently to one side to avoid a mesmerised old lady. I had to fling out one arm as a kind of counterbalance and somehow I managed to get her handbag stuck on the end of my arm. Help! I've been robbed! Stop that boy! He's taking my bag! In no time at all, the whole market seemed to be after me. <coughs> but there was no way I could stop and explain. Streaker was really enjoying herself. There's nothing she likes more than a good chase. She doesn't even care if she's chasing or being chased. We went screaming round corners so fast, my rollerblades started to smoke. We lurched into stalls, sending them tumbling over and spilling their contents every which way. And all, uh, all the time, we were crashing into people and bouncing off them, and the crowd was getting bigger and bigger and noisier and noisier. Stop that, boy! He's stolen an old bag's lady! I'm in an old lady's bag. Get the bag snatcher. <coughs> Excuse me. Streaker whizzed round the next corner so fast that she rolled over and over. And of course, I just carried straight on and smashed headlong into a rack of dresses. Before I knew it, I was being hauled to my feet by a very angry crowd. Not only was I still clutching the old lady's handbag, but I had a rather stunning flower print dress draped over one shoulder. To cut a long story short, I was carted off to the police station, along with Streaker. She sat attentively in the corner and, and looked completely innocent, while I was almost arrested. And I'm going to stop there. I hope you enjoyed that opening section of the 100 Mile an Hour Dog. Thank you for listening. Bye.